but in the big picture, I suppose, we had the whole farm on the base, we'd have two blocks irrigating, not five. It's, it's, it's simple. Yeah, and one of them could be a pensioner. Yeah, and the best thing is the time saving is, um, as I was telling Nicky this morning, is the turnaround time. We can cultivate and start irrigating straight away. We don't have to scarify a road like throw so and fill a head ditch. I started to feel by myself and um, probably two minutes work. Yeah, yeah. And that was it, the boys are starting to cycle. So it's, it is a labour saving. It's a, it's a spraying and cultivating. We can cultivate. They're in, like some fields are in line, field 9 and 11. We just go straight through, keep cultivating, spraying straight through. We don't have to pull up the head ditch, reverse back, turn around. It's just, it's uh, more efficient farming in that sense. And it's, uh, once your initial cost set up's probably a bit dearer, mm -hmm. lasering's dearer, and yeah. we've got to put weirs in and two supplies on a rooftop, one on a bank, uh, one way bay, but after that it's uh, smooth sailing. Yeah, there's a couple of things there that should we, All country, it does, this doesn't suit all country. Mm -hmm. no, the the topography makes it. Uh, the soil types, if you've got different absorption rates and things like that. You can't run water over for two hours and think it's going to be watered. Um, and then if you've got different slopes, it could be just right out of out of Kilda. Um, but when Glenn was working out this, the last field that we did, 17, 16, he, we were talking about, and he said, oh, he said, it might be a little bit dearer to do it this way than the siphon. And I knew we had so much confidence in the system that I said, look, don't even bother thinking about doing it with siphons because we're not going to do it with siphons. Yeah. That was because you just cannot. This is the existing rooftop, 800 metre runs. From tarred rain to the centre, 4 centimetre rise, 40 mil. That's all it is, so it's fairly flat grade. So that's field nine we just looked at, the first one we pulled the boards in. Version one. That's, a, that's the original. Version two, that's a step in the field, which is where Nick and I looked at this morning, where the, you can actually see the step in the field as you're driving along, which does work, but it's not as good, we don't think, because you accumulate so much water on the far end. Now this is um, 14 where we went, where the tall cotton is. And that one's there, it's got a variable grade, but they do vary each bay. This one's got a reverse grade, down then flattens out. So it actually fills up here, water spills over that edge, which is it probably, you know, uh, it's probably four layers of buckets wide that edge, in theory in the bill. Yeah, four or five. Four or five buckets wide, it hits over there and just runs down the hill, that's just a over exaggeration obviously. Then you've got this one here, which is that block we, I, me and Janelle, you see where we stopped on that bank and you can see a bit of a line? Well that's that line there, which is about 80 metres in the field. So it's actually a real slow grade up, which is on 100 metres would be 10 mil. Wouldn't even be, oh yeah, 10 mil it is, sorry. So it's, it's from where it launches into here is only 10 mil rise, then it runs all downhill at 0.03, which is probably, That's quite a from there to there is probably uh, 700 metres it'd be uh, something like 120 mil maybe. So four, four or five inches down to there. The thing is the water, actually hits here, the wheel tracks come out first like most siphon fields, but it backs up and waters back up to about here. Simple. And, that, and the same thing, we found the six inch step seems to be best in between bays because when you get to the, on a four bay field, when you get the end the sea, A is actually dry. But on the rooftop, you get to see there's still some water in A. So that's where this one probably stands out a bit because it's probably, if the first one takes seven and four, there's probably actually water on there for 11 hours, but it doesn't seem to affect the yield. So but when you get it here, and you drive along when your plants, this cotton's just tall, there's actually no water left in there, it's actually drained out. So it's probably a plus. And the best thing is 140 hectares, you can water it 15 hours. You've got to have big flow rates. Flow rates. So and at the moment, as I told Nicky, it's when we're putting out five meg an hour out of each gate, and, which is only a 900 gate butt, so you can, most, most of our fields have got 900 gates on the head ditches, so we can convert over, and we have done. We've converted, field four was a siphon field, which is the first one way bay we did, we converted it to, converted half the field to make sure it worked, so we didn't get caught. Mm. And um, when we pre-watered it, took 24 hours on the siphon and 12 hours on a flood bay to pre-water, so 
half the time. And then the next year we knock the siphon out and put the whole lot on the base. It's just um, labour saving. It's just. Next to nothing, we'll grade we'll the head, uh, the tail drain, it's like a tail drain both ends. We might grade them out once every two or three years. Compared to doing a cycle build every year, we don't do head ditches, we don't have to maintain head ditches, we can't blow anything. It's uh, almost idiot proof. There's probably uh, the heart where the, the water goes through the structures, there's a little bit there's of There's a bit of a dip from the yeah. erosion, but that's yeah. even minimal. That's we, we can fix that. There's probably no different. Well, last year the two high shielding fields that were we had two fallow fields, and even one of them wasn't high shielding. The highest was a fallow field with five bale, and um, the next two high fields were hay fields at 4.7. So mm. they were back to back. And back to back. back, to back. So. Okay. Yeah, that's the best part is um, we don't have to road them up. We don't have to look up the head. We don't blow head issues. We haven't need to blow. Um, there's no cipher to pick up, there's no road bikes, and we can we tolerate 10k, we turn around 10k straight back in the tail around both ends, it's just endless. And uh, I think your efficiency on cultivation and spraying and bring it and it weighs it straight up. And like field one and eleven they're same A B points, so you just GPS straight through one to the next. So the runs instead of being eight hundred meter runs, they're sixteen hundred meter runs. And the pick is the same uh, I'll give you the pictures. I'll try to burn yeah, some water. Yeah, I'm the pickers love it. Well, the pickers, oh, yeah, well, they, don't they, they just they turn around the same speed, drop the bale on the way back in, and mm -hmm. so it's uh, simple. And the yeah. other thing you've got to have is a good laser bucket operator. Okay. We did find issues in the bucket. <coughs> and we learned too from, we, we cut the batter like a tarot, and we cut the batter one bucket wide, yep. which is not good enough because um, when your tractor goes over, your hitch kicks up. So we had to shovel every second to the 12. So I thought we went three buckets wide and then no problem. Just your step. I tell you, one of the other things that people often say to you, but how do you get on with rainfall if you've just irrigated? Mm -hmm. Well, because the structures are all quite big to, to handle big quantities of water all no, the time, water. there's never any issue with the, the well, rainfall events. We did bay because we could do the whole farm in three days in the bays, yeah. which is good going. That's mm -hmm. nearly 2,000 acres in yeah. three days.